Good morning. Hey, it's great you are all still here. Why? <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a nice city though, so now afterwards you have... Finally, you see downtown Bern. <laughs> Bern downtown, yes. Yes. Uh, with nightlife in existence. <laughs> great. Uh, welcome to Klingitz Museum. Some of you have been here six years ago with the Sim Sim HKB Congress when it was brand new, but uh, since then we survived. I think yes. that's the first step. <laughs> uh, even we survived COVID and can, could open again. And now even we let people play some instruments. Thank you. During COVID, <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't really uh, working. Nobody wanted to play a mouthpiece, <laughs> which you don't know what happened before. Uh, so we, we, we got teremines. So that's a COVID playing instrument ah. with the teremine. And oh, as <laughs> people love it, uh, we, we still have them here. And people can play teremine, so that's that's no no touch. <laughs> that, but certain times we, we ha the museums were shot by first by the canton, then by the Swiss government, and again by the canton. So it was very complicated. Then four days open, then again shot, <laughs> um, closed. So you know it. So we are still here. And again, working. Uh, the um, permanent exhibition is C'est le voix qui fait la musique. It, it's the wind making the music. In that case, we include also the violins and some other artists. Or it's the air inside the instrument, which is, in fact, our real instrument is the air. It's not the wood or brass, it's the air, our instrument. That's what the sound makes we vibrate. And there are two um, special exhibitions, our um, curiosities, such as the Aerofor, I will show you. Uh, you may remember from Michael Stein uh, and other Strange things, pseudorophone, uh, so what? And our our uh, precious instruments, our nos trésors, our treasures, uh, in the showcases. Some instruments we can't show without showcases. You will see why. And they are close to showcases. Okay. Um, but my topic this morning, and I try to be short and you have time to have a look into uh, My topic is, there is a convolute in here, and now in front of you, that Karl Buri, the collector of one of the collections, now we have four collections in here, but the primary collection, Kalburi. Uh, he bought it from a uh, from, uh, wind band in eastern Switzerland, Hundwil. And that's why I call it Hundwil, convolute. And it consists in instruments, mostly here, four Upson, and the correlated books. And I think this correlation that's so interesting. It's all of the first part of the 19th century. So it becomes even more interesting. Compared to Kafartha, it's simple music. <coughs> but the connection of the 463 pieces in these books and to names of players, to the instruments conserved with these books. That's really interesting. And we are just at the start of a research project into that. And I want 
I try for the first time to just go through the, tell you the story of what here. <clears throat> so it starts Anno 1811. Uh, <laughs> old, old writing, but you can okay. learn this. Anno 1811 ist die jetzige Musikgesellschaft zusammengetreten in der oberen Bleiche vor dem and then something uh, wie sehen wir dann? Uh, Aussagiert. Erased. 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 Erased, in fact, with the razor. Uh, so in the year 1811, the present wind band came together in the upper so-called Bleiche and we know where this is, before, and we don't know what. But with, with uh, uh, ultraviolet light, you, we will be able even to read this. Why to read something that's erased? That's another question. <laughs> There's some reason it was erased, because it's wrong. <laughs> or it's not anymore right, <laughs> we don't know. So, uh, and that's written, that's a uh, photo of the first page. Mm. Oh! Christoph, your Schubladen are no more books. <laughs> I, I forgot to take, for example, this book. Uh, uh, it's got Schubladen is off. Ja, sie sind nicht recht. Ja, einfach die, die vorne sind. So, and it's, it's the bass drums book. So, he played from a part. He, boom, 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 boom. Or it was a bass drum. You will see the picture. Kind of a, a bass drum at that time. So I call these books set A, and they were not at Hondwil, but uh, in Rorschach, uh, close to Bodensee. Lake no, of Constance. Lake of Constance, thank you very much. Uh, that's Canton of St. Gallen. And in these books, we have 276 pieces. Uh, Ich brauche die Referentansicht. That kind of music is waltzes, all kinds of marches, two, 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 four, four, four. Six eight. Hopser is, is a dance. Almond, Ecossaise. Mostly we don't know the composers. It's it will be fifteen books, extant. <laughs> clarinet, E flat, five clarinets, B flat, first trumpet, first, second and third horn. <coughs> this bass trombone, first, second bassoon, this bass drum. And there's no score at that time. Uh, it's just part. A uh, handwritten. So we can conclude there is missing the flute because uh, we know there are flutes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes you do too many things at the same time. It's, it's uh, typical me. Uh, <clears throat> we know that there was a flute. Maybe there were more, more clarinet parts. Uh, if a, there is a first trumpet, so it must be a second trumpet, which is not two voices in the same state. So it must be a, a book missing. 
And there are, oh, is it Stichnoten? Sounds wieder vergessen. Q notes. Q notes. Q notes. Q notes. We have Q notes on the, on the bassoon and saying that is played by the serpent. Which kind of serpent or bass horn, we don't know. There is a Hirschbrunner bass horn uh, from about that time there. Could be also a bass horn or a serpent, we don't know. And uh, percussion surviving is uh, Turkish crescent, cymbals, and a triangle. So it must be snare drums, bass drum, uh, also. Now, that's um, in the trombone book, he gives us a list. Zusammen neun Klarinetten, ein Piccolo, zwei, drei Gorni, zwei Trombe, zwei Fagotti, ein Trombone, ein Serpente, ein Katuba, zwei Kessulon, ein Halbmond, ein Bargiatti. <coughs> Die ganze Musik besteht Tari Quali aus 42 Mann. So, together, so it, it names now the band, nine Klarinets, one Piccolo, which means a circle, Three corny, due trom uh, trombe, due fago, uh, why it's in Italian. And two bassoons, one trombone, one serpent. Katuba, I suppose it's the bass drum. Two snare drums, Turkish kiss, and pair of cymbals. The whole band consists, tally quality, in 24 men. It's, it's a big. Napoleon had 28 men with him in um, Napoleon I. So that's some years later, if, if you suppose it's 1811 on the later. So it's quite the same as the books we have. It's quite the same uh, number of musicians as the 17 books. So we have almost all music excellent in this. 276 pieces. Um, <coughs> the, the missing parts we can arrange ourselves comparing with other music of that time. For example, our set B, where other parts are missing and other are so that we can stylistically uh, conclude the flute, for example, which is very important. And now it becomes so much, so interesting. In every book, almost every book, we have such list. So that's the trumpeter. He says, "Oh, the number eighty-five is good." <laughs> and 59 too, 108 is also good, 69 is good. I don't know if he, good means he has uh, uh, learned by heart, or it's a good piece, or it's easy to play, so it's good for him. Uh, we don't know. But I think he, he learned, they played by heart. You don't play with such a book yeah. on your... Oh, yeah. on your layer. What is this? Layer. Sometimes it's easy. <laughs> um, so they must have been playing by heart with this material. But then we have 1822 in. Maybe Rorschach, 18th of February. Oh, it's some weeks ago and some years. <laughs> yeah, it's 201 year ago. So they played 67, 71, 88, 104, 108. So that was a march by Rummel, an Allemand by Seif, Pavel Dublé by Küffner. 
Hispaniola by Küffner and Barre Doublé by Küffner with a posthorn solo. No titles. Yesterday I was thinking, yes, we look at this quite terrible colonialistic title of this march, but the musician is number 67. <laughs> <laughs> as, as a musician, did, do you remember the titles of your number one, no. your number two, in your marching book? No, no, <laughs> it was just the numbers. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> that depends. Uh, um, or um, 1823, is it here? 1823, 6th Janer, 6th of January, another program played, also pieces by Küffner Seif, and an arrangement of a song, Dr. Eisenbach. And it's all these, these guys are all around Würzburg. That's, that's quite interesting. <laughs> um, so, Rummel, he lived 1787 to 1849, which is first part of the 19th century, was a pedagogue, musician, composer. Josef Seif, Seif around the same time, died in 50, 1851 in Würzburg. And we, I don't, didn't find out which Küffner it was. It, it, there is a dissertation about Josef Küffner, but no, no of his printed pieces correspond to our many Küffner pieces, and there were other Küffners. So, it's maybe him, maybe not. This Josef Küffner died in 1856 at the age of 80. And these solo drummers in this arrangement. That's quite, you see, we want to go further and we want to like to play this music finally. So. <laughs> um, that's one of the goals. So, then something happened. Maybe the 1830 revolution, which was for Switzerland and that's Eastern Switzerland, but anyway, 1830 revolution was also important. It was not so competitive here, but or it wasn't not a war, but uh, the it, the cantons became much more democratic. There was no Switzerland as it uh, in a modern way, uh, but the canton become more democratic which meant the officers of the high, uh, upper class were not any more interested to spend money just to have a nice marching band in nice uniforms. <coughs> so the, the, music, the wind bands lost their sponsors. Uh, uh, um, they paid for additional instruments additional players, maybe professional players even, um, and for the uniforms. I think that was the most expensive. It is still today, no? <laughs> the uniforms, it's the most important thing of me. I was, I, oh, it was terrible. We had such uniform, which was very close here. <laughs> and you had to play, and marching. Some kilometers. What? Okay. <laughs> I don't know how many numbers we did, one after the other. So, look at that. Fagotto Sekundbuch, second bassoon, Johann Jakob Zuberbühler, Auen, 1849. So this 1849 becomes an interesting, but we don't know why, uh, uh, often mentioned year. But maybe that was the, just the formal, uh, formal foundation of this band, because after 80, uh, for, 48 was the year of the new constitution in Switzerland. This 
Revolution 48 led to the modern state of Switzerland with the constitution and then rules for uh, found, founding clubs, Vereine, associations, associations changed. But we have to look at that. <laughs> That's uh, just a guess. And so, let's now have a look at the instrument. <coughs> It's uh, that's the two bassoons. Which one is it? Could be this one, huh? Or the other one. Very interesting bassoons. Arnold told me they are very special because it's it's 19th century done, but they are copies of older style bassoons. So I'm sure. That was the bassoons played also in Rorschach, set A. And now we have here a, a portrait of one of these bassoons in the book of Johann Jakob Zuberbühl playing the second voice. These two voices of bassoons in the style of, as we have today, B flat and E flat, a uh, contrabass tuba or based to a bus called in Switzerland. In the so sometimes they are in octaves, sometimes they are in unison playing the bass voice. So the two bassoons <coughs> Ah, there is one pair of gloves left <coughs> after our toolbox and our Prince Regent band <laughs> using I have not enough gloves. Um, <clears throat> that's the bassoons. Here is the trombone. The specialists oh. see it's it's the uh, four four uh, double, double slide double slide E flat, very German instrument, very common. We try to restore it, but it, it's not really playable. So, it's, so um, that must be this bassoon. Uh, this uh, trombone. We don't. Ha he didn't draw a, a picture of the bass of the trombone, but must be have been this. But now it comes. There are three horns, or later on four horns, and so in this wind band, we have these two horns. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's dangerous what I'm doing here. <laughs> it's it's low-style museum. It should be a po police man. And <laughs> <it should be. laughs> That's two Haltenhof. Invention horns with crooks surviving, uh, 18, uh, 1784 and 86. So it's mo two of the mo most important surviving horns, classical invention horns. But it's the year, it's the years of Mozart. So maybe they were played by. Uh, trained musician and later later on when they were 40 years old very old horns uh, I remember in Dresden oh, they are not working anymore 100 years later <laughs> oh, no no that was 40 years later 40 years later um, yes so they were used in this band playing that's harmony parts, that the horns are playing harmony parts, two, three, or four horns, with crooks, and um, extant crooks. There, are, there is one more horn, that's the, oh, that's Anonymous, a late, later horn. Maybe that was new for the, that band in the 18, 11 or later 1820s and there is the fourth uh, there is in, on display the Eschenbach dated 1820 horn uh, 
uh, just beside uh, Turkish Christen. <coughs> that is a kind of an ensemble of a Turkish band up there, so I use some of the instruments. But the leaders were, were the clarinets. So that's B flat clarinet made by Lutz. It's close to Rorschach, close to Hundwil, canton of Appenzell, a B flat clarinet, and uh, with five keys, which is the normal clarinet of wind band at that time. Gleichzeitigkeit is ungleichzeitig. Wie hast du es übersetzt? Simultaneity is not simultaneous. Yes, yeah. yes. So that's the normal clarinet for wind bands up to 1850. So uh, we, I have a 1830 price list of Hirsbrunner, and you have to pay extra if you want more than five keys, if you try to be a musician. <laughs> so the, 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 lead, the, the melody is first B flat clarinet and the E flat clarinet, which at that time normally was the conductor, the director of the band playing E flat clarinet. Um, then there is something. What is puzzling? The bassoons are written in B flat. I didn't understand. Maybe you saw this in, in my in my book. I have a sh short chapter also about this on Will Ensemble, and I say in B flat question mark, but I f didn't find the solution. <clears throat> bassoons are of course in C. <laughs> Can be something else. There are no B flat bassoons. And finally, we saw the clarinet, which everybody, including me and Kalbori, said is an E flat clarinet, is an F clarinet. Oh, wow. That's an F clarinet. And then it became clear. What happened? They, uh, they raised the, the pitch by one ton, and it became a so-called F music. It was an E flat music, and that, that is known in Switzerland. You, there was also music, F music. So, they, we don't have the E-flat clarinet of the set A, that's lost, uh, but we have the F clarinet of set B, and we have the B-flat clarinet of set A, just changing to C clarinet, which is a... Uh, um, it's a good, huh? it's a long. And you can change the length of the two. Oh, we see. Cable. Levers. Of the levers. So they are, you can change them by two and a half oh. centimeters. So for B flat, you need it uh, open, and for C, you need it closed. And you can open here, it's, it's an intonation correction, and that's still Lutz made in other instruments, other intonation corrections with holes in here, and you can just turn the, the bell to open or close the hole for intonation correction of the long notes. Because the complicated, the, the, remaining part of the clarinet is, is this. So these uh, notes become uh, wrong in C when they are right in B flat or vice versa. Uh, 
while the, the rest is is changing. For the other instruments, it's not uh, it's no problem. They take the instead of the E flat groups, the F groups for horns. They didn't change on the uh, on the music the E flat to F. It's, it's clear just played with the other group for the trumpets and uh, um, trombone is anyway uh, um, concert pitch. So only the bassoons had to be changed to one tone higher uh, the, the, the music. <clears throat> so, so that's the only trace we see they from set B onwards were F music. Uh, and there is a nice story. In 18, in 1862, the Swiss Association of All Wind Band was founded, Blasmusikverband. 1862, and in the competition or in the just reunion, the yearly or every five years reunion of 1880, in the competition, F music were not eligible. Okay, eligible. Only you can just uh, take part in the in the competition as an E-flat music, because the F music was more brilliant, I suppose, and they anyway win otherwise. <laughs> yes, I don't know how about in England for the brass bands, is such a phenomenon? Um, is that that some... D-flat and <laughs> E-flat. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, we have the same instruments, but <coughs> just the flute, which is not surviving, and the F, clarinet, the F flute and F clarinet was new to this band. Then, um, <coughs> for brass organologues. That's the most interesting part. Later additions to this set B. So it's small books <coughs> and they must have been made later because the first 120 pieces in the, this set uh, are just partly copied, five of them. And then from 121 onwards, they are also in here. And they are for, ah, oh, third clarinet, uh, valve trumpet in A flat or B flat. Uh, depends if the music is playing in E flat or F. Alto horn, bugle, valve trumpet, valve horn, bass trumpet, and two valve ophicleides, which from then onwards, from this addition, I suppose they replaced the bassoons. There's the same voices, but now for the ophicleide. And some of these instruments are excellent. That's the two ophicleides. It's a uh, uh, rotwin, that's the rot, and then that's the The Durchschmidt. Um, and you, here you can, you have uh, crooks. And here you have uh, Einsteckbogen. To change from E flat to F. And there is a bombardon, or <laughs> was a bombardon, 
that's the rest of it. <laughs> um, it was a, a bombardon, uh, which also survives with that band, and we have to find out, or I have to find out, what then was the role, maybe it replaced one of these instruments of this valve doppelklaits, or it was a third player, or whatever. You can imagine these, these nice bombardons with uh, the valves here and uh, the valve slides in between and playing this, this way. Right. <laughs> and other instruments were added, a valve trumpet. And I think, Arnold, you said once that we really a crazy instrument is one of the narrowest mm. yeah. trumpets. That is interesting. Look at that small, yes, small thing. Of course, you have these Allen. Um, I mean, there there are similar instruments in the states yeah. with these extremely small bore. So the valve, yeah. like valve post yeah. horn, American. So what like what yeah. sometimes is referred to as post horn, yeah. but is really a trumpet. Right. Yes. And it could be also Durschmidt, it's the same style of, or one of other Saxon makers. And uh, so, weight crooks, and then it's uh, uh, a cornet. Yeah, the voice is not surviving, I suppose. But that's we are in the beginning of the research. I just tried to follow the story as long as I understood it until now. Uh, <coughs> with also surviving crooks. And the bass trumpet. Oh, even with the machine. So the other trumpet. So that's this bass trumpet. Uh, and they were added. They, to my opinion, didn't replace something. Just the officlates. They replaced, I suppose, the bassoon. Um, so they were playing alongside. And then I come to the last set C. We have these small books. Uh, 14 of them, with seven, 27 pieces for almost the same ensemble. And it's not really clear, maybe that was now for on the Lira marching book, because they didn't <laughs> learn it by heart or whatever, but there is no traces of use. So. It's, it's not really used. There is no such programs as we had in the other books. Ah, on the 18th of January, we play these five pieces. And uh, so it's, it's no slurs added, which we find in, in the other books. Some, some musical additions by pencil, while the rest is written in, oh, tinte, in tinte, ink, uh, ink. ink. Ongoing, or starting project in August. And there is a horn surviving with the ensemble, which I doubt if it ever was played with this ensemble, because it's something really different, but it came together with that convolute. And that's the earliest of all the instruments. Macht, mm clear, -hmm. in Neukirchen, 1782. But it just survives with the convolute, and we will find out what was the role, or if this is original or whatever. <laughs> you don't know. But it's really from 
from the horn side. It's, it's some really interesting instruments. Uh, from the musical side, it's really, really interesting. Uh, and so, uh, that's a, that's a nice but really complicated uh, photo. <laughs> I'm quite sure that these are clarinets, but maybe it should be oboes with just. But difficult to understand. In the second place, there is a date on it. 1772, I think, on the drum. But that's, we don't know if that's just a backdated uh, event and the, because the style and we have to really do a study just about this painting. It's on wood and a peso, huh? The size peso. Uh, <clears throat> but it's, it's quite a Turkish band, huh? It's difficult to see here. It's my photo, and we, we couldn't even uh, use the lights in this. Uh, the, hotel, uh, the restaurant was closed. Uh, um, but it's a trumpet, two horns, four clarinets, to my opinion, two bassoons, and this bass drum played this way. The cymbals surviving. It's one snare drum. Often we see also uh, Turkish bands with two snare drums, triangle, and tambourine. So that's the story until what I found till now. Um, <clears throat> I think it's really an important ensemble. We plan to uh, p play a reenactment with really five keys, key clarinets, with really some of these instruments even, that the bassoons are restored, that's okay. Also the clarinets can be restored, other, th other instruments can't be restored or shouldn't be played as the Halton Hall, that's something else. But for this, we start in August, a pro, uh, uh, four years um, 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 research. We is uh, Yannick V. He is present. He's a historian, a musicologist, and Thomas Fuchs, who is the historian who really knows everything about Appenzell. He's really an expert for every Appenzell. So, for example, to find this Johann Jakob Zuberbühler in Auen, maybe we, f we find yeah, the biography. Yeah, we, we, we will find something. We will find we will something. something. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a recording of his play <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube. You can do everything today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so my part will be organology, as much as I can. And then we are looking for, and that's the why I wanted to present to you today. We're looking for a doctoral student. Uh, you should apply by 8th of May. <laughs> um, but um, that doctoral student can, it, uh, the nationality, doesn't matter. So you, uh, he or she hasn't to be Swiss, but it has to be at a Swiss university, and so it's together with Christoph Friedo, who is a very open professor at now since one year in at the University of Geneva, together with me, with the HKB. You may know that we, our University of Applied Science don't have the right to do doctoral, uh, the third, the third uh, term, 
No. Cycle. <laughs> yeah. The third cycle. cycle. Uh, we are not allowed to do this, so we just organized with universities that we uh, can do it <laughs> in this way. With this case, in this case, uh, University of Geneva, the dissertation can be written in German, English, or French. You need a little German reading, as you saw, may also the old old writing, but that's not so difficult. And uh, um, yes, you have to be aware that you sit in archives, <laughs> <laughs> which some of us really liked. <laughs> so, I just, what time is it? Oh, it's For uh, con to conclude, I want to show you some other nice things in here. Uh, on, on display, on um, uh, or not display. Yeah. So, and you can then stay here, take a uh, uh, iPad, and you have all the films and also tra English translations, French translations, on of the text, and all these video. So. I start, maybe you saw this nice slide trumpet in, in our, one of our treasures in this first showcase. And uh, there is one player who plays all this stuff of 19th century, uh, Christian Kovac, and he made for me a short recording of that trumpet. Since I know that Doverne just took from anybody, from somebody else, the etudes for valve trumpet, I doubt if he composed this one himself. That's one. <laughs> and you know these two courtois, maybe, uh, or the, the left one. There is a third one, a much uh, simpler one in Bruno Kampan's collection, courtois. I had, uh, had two. Two. I had one with three valves. Slide. Ah, yes, yes. Arnold, yes. we has it. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I have another one from the orchestre uh, Adébar de Foucault, private yeah. orchestre de Foucault. But now it's uh, Jean Daniel Souchon, we have it too. Ah, okay. So I'm not anymore. <laughs> but these two are very nicely done. And if we. So the left one is Paris uh, in, in the exhibition, and we know it's first prize. Décerné à l'élève Cerclier, le 3 août 1846. Cerclier was a student and successor of Dauvergne at the Conservatoire. Um, <clears throat> the burn is even nicer done. There are some things that are not on the Cerclier Paris Courtois slide trumpet. So let's say that here it's quite the same, but in the Bern, if you have a close look, you see something is missing. In between the stamp and the signature, there was a, a plate. Uh, 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 
uh, yes, there is a plate missing. You, you see some marks that have been something there, and, and in, in the case of a repair, you see a repair on that place. Then the plate was taking, taken off. And if you know Kutwa instruments, you know that it's the, the writing on the bell is, is, is the design is, is very clear. You don't have 10 centimeters without something. Edwin, mm -hmm. when you say that there are two Kutwa's existing, do you mean the, the forward facing slide? Yes. Yes. Fine. Yes. Is it, you know, there's an there's a English Kutwa? Yes, the, the French. Slide trumpet, French slide trumpet. Yes. Do you know that there is a sax in Metropolitan Museum since four years? You knew, you knew it. It's not yet on the catalog, but I know it's something there. Adolf sax slide trumpet uh, for uh, French slide. Um, So, yes, so now this missing plate, I know that's a very personal interpretation. So that could be also a first prize. It could be the first prize for him, for Blankemann. You may know this picture, but that's a right-handed. And ours, in fact, is left-handed. Just Christian didn't manage to do it with the left hand, but it's a left-handed and you hold the natural trumpet as normally you hold the natural trumpet. So you, you move the slide with the left hand. So it's not really this, it could be, but according to the picture, it's not this trumpet. And so it could be also given, it must be given before 1852 because it's facteur du conservatoire. And from 1853, Courtois wrote, had to write, Facteur du Conservatoire Impérial. Uh, and the address. Mm. The Rue de Caire ended in 1855. But it must be before 1853 when. Now, also this December 1852, Napoleon became emperor, and he had to follow this. So all the instruments before that date of Kutla are facteur du conservatoire only. After 1870, he writes facteur du conservatoire national. Uh, you have to be careful with that yeah. in politics. <laughs> it's dangerous <laughs> if you write something wrong. So this plate can be Blankemann, it can be somebody else, like the first prize, 1845, Jean-Baptiste Arbon. Why not? Just my personal opinion, because the instrument is here. <laughs> Why not? So, it looks like a first prize. There was something, there was a plate saying something. First prize, for example. And it must be between 42, Antoine Coutoua, and 52, Napoleon. Not so many first prizes. So, another very nice instrument. It's not ours. Um, this sax horn, Adolf sax in high B flat. Um, 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 um. Supposedly even uh, original mouthpiece or uh, fitting very well. Uh, dated 62, use are 60, the, the five keys. Yes. So, and uh, uh, it's unique. It's only forward-facing. <coughs> there is one in Brussels, 
upward facing and by Adolf Sachs, there are others by other makers, high B flat, but uh, that's the two by Adolf Sachs. Uh, Christian played for me. You may remember he played Arnold's yes. Contralto in the Saxhorn Congress. This the whole piece, so he tried to play a part of it. Um, and it's here. So. Einzigartiges Instrument. Thank you, Christian. <laughs> He's such a nice guy. Um, um, and you saw, if you use valves, then for a trill, you use other keys. Who has been playing a key trumpet knows <laughs> all these problems. And the keys can also be used for some difficult notes with three valves or the high G sharp uh, played with the keys, very interesting. So I, I prepared an article on, on that instrument and I always called it Saxon Suregu. But now, uh, th that's a usual word, or beef, si uh, aigu. Uh, but we could uh, also call it sopranino. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it's really the question to you, what should I do? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it more, it's not a used term, sopranino, but it's, everybody would understand it. Mm -hmm. But the used terms are aigu or suraigu in French. Mm -hmm. But w maybe for the future, what would be better? How, how should I call it? An established name in, in the time or today? In the saxophone. No, no, today you have also piccolo, saxophone piccolo. But this was very yeah, recent. But it's not good. For uh, that's not good. No, uh, th that I would like. What do you say? I prefer surregu. Hmm? Surregu. <laughs> You're French. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, Arnaud? I think Sardine is the expert on terminology. <laughs> well, I'll have a look at the instrument later on. Yes, <laughs> yes but I would really, yeah. because I think when I, that could be then uh, quite the definition, and yes. so it could disturb people or it could help yeah. for piccolo, saxhorns, cornets, whatever. Uh, I come to the end. Uh, a Swiss end. So we have now we have a double a contrabass alphorn. That's a uh, organological. It's a wrong word. It's a double length alphorn in F sharp. Uh, you can even play it if you like to. You did. In fact, when you use the normal mouthpiece, you play in the normal uh, register. You have just double uh, uh, double so feel a tune twice, twice as many notes, notes. twice as many notes <coughs> so you have to be a little bit aware aha uh -huh, there is also a d a, a c sharp in between c and d natural notes is also c sharp and all these up to 24 natural notes uh, you harmonics you can, uh, you have to be aware, you have many possibilities. Um, but here is another story. You will see the same also there on this D 
was once a, a special exhibition about Alcorn. Um, and this on your bottom right is <laughs> instrument because you have that's the it's an on loan and that's what I signed it's only played by members of the Yodel and Alphorn Association of Switzerland <laughs> so you have to show me yeah, who you are <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was an audition. <laughs> that's a, that's a, very, a very interesting association. So, for example, the seventh, uh, seventh harmonic is not allowed. If you play seventh harmonic, you lose the competition. <laughs> um, so, the story of this instrument which is on long here. The bore is very narrow. It's a trumpet. It's a very small instrument. I once did a talk in, in um, <coughs> Portugal about the different lengths of yeah, yeah. alphorns, and it ranged from 1 meter 20 to 4 meters. Yeah. You are a specialist on these things. There is no, no uh, rules until they start to play trio or duo, which is is eight, 1940s, when they start to... They did it first on the, on the Jordan festivals in the 70s, I said it's the 70s. But it, we have sources until, uh, back until 1815 for two albums playing together. Okay, so, then... But before it was not a... Yeah. It was not a cornerstone of the tradition. Okay. But in fact, it's a solo instrument throughout the history, and so the length is not really important. <coughs> uh, it's important if you have a short one or a long note, but it's not for the centimeters. It's not important. In 18, in the 1820s, the Alphorn was died. Nobody played Alphorn. Nobody could make Alphorn. It was nothing. And so, Fürchte Gott Huber was a composer and <coughs> teacher, sing, uh, class teacher for future teachers. Uh, uh, and he, wa he learned to play himself. And then he wanted to give lessons that this tradition re uh, was, was reenacted. Reborn. Thank you. And reborn. And so he got money for, uh, to let make six Alphorns, and he found a guy who tried or who knew how to make them. And then he got six pupils in summer in Grindelwald. That's the picture on your left. And uh, he, uh, he was teaching for two weeks. And then they were sent out, and they were obliged to play often on their farms. So that the tradition becomes more and more known. 
And the next year, again, six pupils, six new horns given to them. And this is one of the four surviving, and we think they are all from these two courses. Grindelwald, 1826-1827. And almost uh, at least one survived when Brahms was in Lauterbrunnen. Mm -hmm. And he played so he wanted to play oh, but he cracked. <laughs> and he said C. So these instruments are C or D. That's that's interesting. But he played the eleventh partial. And today, they are playing, the horns are playing uh, F sharp, mm -hmm. and not the eleventh partial. <laughs> we should change that. <laughs> we should correct Brahms. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> uh, and the flute also. They, they could do a, a quarter note. They, they could do an eleventh part, even, even the flute. No problem. So we should change Brahms. <laughs> Um, that's another picture of the time, so we have the knowledge of about the length of these alpines of that time of Fürstigal Tuben. And with this I end my talk. I hope there was something you enjoyed. <laughs>